Did you know that an 8x10 area of rooftop is, can generate up to 50 gallons of stormwater runoff during a one inch rain event? So my name is Julie Peralt and I'm a watershed coordinator with the Polk Soil and Water Conservation District and today I am here to teach you how to build a rain barrel so that you can put that rooftop runoff water to good use. Rain barrels are one of the simplest and most cost effective water conservation projects that you can implement at your home. And they have multiple benefits to both you and our community. In our community and in our cities, we have many rooftops, parking lots, roads, and other impervious surfaces that can generate tens of millions of gallons of water every time it rains. As this water falls on our rooftops and flows into streets, it can pick up many different types of pollutants, including grass clippings, oils from your car, um, trash, and other types of things that can threaten our local water quality. In addition to being a water quality threat, Storm water also can be a huge problem when it comes to stream bank erosion. These mass quantities of storm water as they're generated from our impervious surfaces, they quickly, quickly enter our stream banks and cause lots of erosion and that further damages our local water quality. Rain barrels are one water conservation tool that you can use at your home to help mitigate these problems in our community. And not to mention they have many benefits for you as well. Rain barrels, uh, the water that you collect from them, you can use it in a variety of ways. The most obvious way is to use it for plants, gardens, um, or even watering your lawn, or you could possibly use it to wash exterior fixtures at your home, such as windows or your siding, or you could also potentially um, maybe think about using it for washing out your recyclables before you put them in the recycling bin. Um, it is important to note that rainwater collected in a rain barrel is non-potable, which means that you, aren't, you should not be drinking it. Um, so don't use it for yourself, for your pets, chickens if you have them, or other animals. And now let's get to the fun part. Let's learn how to make our rain barrel. Before we get started, um, we're going to go over the simple materials and supplies that you need to make your rain barrel. So first and foremost, we're going to use a couple power tools. Number one, your basic power drill, um, and we'll be using a variety of drill bits of different sizes um, to make the different rain barrel components. And then we're also going to be using a tool. This is a sawzall. Um, you could also use this or a similar type power tool to make cuts in your rain barrel. And then we are also going to be using um, some mesh screen. We're gonna have an overflow tube um, and we'll talk about some other materials as we start to actually construct our barrel. Before you start to actually start poking holes and cutting in your rain barrel, the first step you wanna think about is where do you actually want to place your rain barrel at your home? So I encourage anybody, if you're wanting your rain barrel, think about the particular downspout that you will be using to collect water from. Look at that downspout, look at where you're hoping to collect it from, think about where you might be needing to direct your overflow to, and use that as guidance to dictate where you want to actually cut the holes in your rain barrel. The first step that we start with to create your rain barrel is to create a hole so that water from your downspout can enter the rain barrel from the top. So this is a rain barrel that we sourced um, locally from a landscaping company that was just trying to get rid of them. So it's a great way to kind of upcycle this barrel. Um, if you couldn't find a landscaping company or maybe a local car wash um, around you to first source a barrel, you could also try maybe tracking down a recycled wine barrel. That's a really neat and beautiful way to get a rain barrel. Um, or you could try other resources such as the Iowa DNR's Iowa Waste Exchange Database, which is a website that has all sorts of recycled materials that you can use. Um, so for this barrel, to make the cut in the top, we are going to use what we call a Sawzall. Um, Sawzall is a type of a tool um, that um, can be pretty powerful and it will cut just like butter through the plastic in this particular type of rain barrel. So, what we did here, um, this rain barrel, it had um, originally it looked like this. It kind of had this smaller opening um, that you can kind of see here. However, when we look at this opening, it's not quite big enough to maybe collect the amount of water that would be flowing from your downspout. So what you want to do is you kind of want to make a little bit bigger cut. If you're going to be using a tool like a Sawzall, I highly recommend to take your drill and make some larger <laughs> holes first so that it does make it easier and safer to use the Sawzall to make a safe cut into this rain barrel. Now the next step of creating your rain barrel is to create a hole for your spigot, which is how you will actually get water out of a, a watering can when you're using the water from your rain barrel. Um, so here we have um, a half inch male spigot. You can find this at any type of hardware store. 
um, and then we are going to drill this hole using a three quarter inch drill bit. Um, something like this or a hole saw will work excellently um, to make this hole. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make this hole. Um, in this drill bit, you will find it's gonna make a hole that's a little bit too small for this. So what we used instead um, is I have this basic kind of metal file that you can use to very finely make that hole just the right size so that you will have a watertight hold on your spigot. The next step in building your barrel is to create a hole for your spigot. A spigot is the area in which you will be allowing water to exit your barrel and put it into a watering can to use it to water your plants or other purposes. So what we have here, um, I have a half inch male spigot, which you can find at any hardware store, or perhaps you could try, did you know that an eight by 10 area of rooftop is, can generate up to 50 gallons of stormwater runoff during a one inch rain event? So my name is Julie Peralt and I'm a watershed coordinator with the Polk Soil and Water Conservation District and today I am here to teach you how to build a rain barrel so that you can put that rooftop runoff water to good use. Rain barrels are one of the simplest and most cost effective water conservation projects that you can implement at your home. And they have multiple benefits to both you and our community. In our community and in our cities, we have many rooftops, parking lots, roads, and other impervious surfaces that can generate tens of millions of gallons of water every time it rains. As this water falls on our rooftops and flows into streets, it can pick up many different types of pollutants, including grass clippings, oils from your car, um, trash, and other types of things that can threaten our local water quality. In addition to being a water quality threat, Stormwater also can be a huge problem when it comes to stream bank erosion. These mass quantities of stormwater as they're generated from our impervious surfaces, they quickly, quickly enter our stream banks and cause lots of erosion and that further damages our local water quality. Rain barrels are one water conservation tool that you can use at your home to help mitigate these problems in our community. And not to mention they have many benefits for you as well. Rain barrels, uh, the water that you collect from them, you can use it in a variety of ways. The most obvious way is to use it for plants, gardens, um, or even watering your lawn, or you could possibly use it to wash exterior fixtures at your home, such as windows or your siding, or you could also potentially um, maybe think about using it for washing out your recyclables before you put them in the recycling bin. Um, it is important to note that rainwater collected in a rain barrel is non-potable, which means that you, aren't, you should not be drinking it. Um, so don't use it for yourself, for your pets, chickens if you have them, or other animals. And now let's get to the fun part. Let's learn how to make our rain barrel. Before we get started, um, we're gonna go over the simple materials and supplies that you need to make your rain barrel. So first and foremost, we're gonna use a couple power tools. Number one, your basic power drill, um, and we'll be using a variety of drill bits of different sizes um, to make the different rain barrel components. And then we're also going to be using a tool. This is a Sawzall. Um, you could also use this or a similar type power tool to make cuts in your rain barrel. And then we are also going to be using um, some mesh screen. We're gonna have an overflow tube um, and we'll talk about some other materials as we start to actually construct our barrel. Before you start to actually start poking holes and cutting in your rain barrel, the first step you wanna think about is where do you actually want to place your rain barrel at your home? So I encourage anybody, if you're wanting your rain barrel, think about the particular downspout that you will be using to collect water from. Look at that downspout, look at where you're hoping to collect it from, think about where you might be needing to direct your overflow to, and use that as guidance to dictate where you want to actually cut the holes in your rain barrel. The first step that we start with to create your rain barrel is to create a hole so that water from your downspout can enter the rain barrel from the top. So this is a rain barrel that we source um, locally from a landscaping company that was just trying to get rid of them. So it's a great way to kind of upcycle this barrel. Um, if you couldn't find a landscaping company or maybe a local car wash um, around you to first source a barrel, you could also try maybe tracking down a recycled wine barrel. That's a really neat and beautiful way to get a rain barrel. Um, or you could try other resources such as the Iowa DNR's Iowa Waste Exchange Database, which is a website that has all sorts of recycled materials that you can use. Um, so for this barrel, to make the cut in the top, we are going to use what we call a Sawzall. Um, a Sawzall is a type of a tool um, that um, it can be pretty powerful and it will cut just like butter through the plastic in this particular type of rain barrel. So what we did here, um, this rain barrel, it had um, originally it looked like this. It kind of had this smaller opening um, that you can kind of see here. However, when we look at this opening, 
it's not quite big enough to maybe collect the amount of water that would be flowing from your downspout. So what you wanna do is you kinda of wanna make a little bit bigger cut. If you're going to be using a tool like a Sawzall, I highly recommend to take your drill and make some larger <laughs> holes first so that it does make it easier and safer to use the Sawzall to make a safe cut into this rain barrel. Now the next step of creating your rain barrel is to create a hole for your spigot, which is how you will actually get water out of a, a watering can when you're using the water from your rain barrel. Um, so here we have um, a half inch male spigot. You can find this at any type of hardware store. Um, and then we are going to drill this hole using a three quarter inch drill bit. Um, something like this or a hole saw will work excellently um, to make this hole. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make this hole um, in this drill bit you will find it's gonna make a hole that's a little bit too small for this. So what we used instead um, is I have this basic kind of metal file that you can use to very finely make that hole just the right size so that you will have a watertight hold on your spigot. The next step in building your barrel is to create a hole for your spigot. A spigot is the area in which you will be allowing water to exit your barrel and put it into a watering can to use it to water your plants or other purposes. So what we have here, um, I have a half inch male spigot, which you can find at any hardware store, or perhaps you could try source from um, an upcycled shop like Habitat for Humanities Restore. They might have supplies like this that you could find um, to get some other recycled materials used in this barrel. And what you're gonna use is, um, since that's a half inch male spigot, I'm gonna use a three quarter inch drill bit or a hole saw could also work. Um, so when you do this, you're gonna want to look at your barrel. You don't wanna put it at the very bottom because then if you are ever storing your barrel, you really don't want this spigot to be like too low where it's hitting the ground, um, but you, but you do want to have it as low as you possibly can to get the maximum water storage out of this barrel. So after you cut the hole, um, you might find that the hole is a little bit too small for your spigot. In that case, you can use, um, like here I have this metal round file, which I use to very, very finely um, make that hole a little bit bigger so that you have a very, very watertight fit on your spigot. Um, to further reinforce um, the water tightness of that hold, um, you could use something like this, PTFE thread tape, which is very common to use in plumbing, um, or you could also use a type of caulking to further kind of reinforce that seal and make sure that it is watertight. The next step for your rain barrel is to create an overflow. During any rain, you know, we may be having a huge rain in which this barrel will fill up very quickly. As we mentioned earlier, it only takes an eight by 10 foot area to generate 50 gallons of water during a one inch rain. This gallon here is about 55 gallons. It will fill very, very quickly. So um, what we definitely need to do here is create an overflow so that water has a place to go if this rail, rain barrel does in fact get full. So when you create your overflow, you're gonna want to think about where you want your overflow to drain to. So on this barrel, we have our downspout coming down through this side. We have our spigot over here, but then at my house where I'm gonna put this rain barrel, I have a garden that is actually over on this side and my house is over here. So I want to make sure that I am directing water away from my house and the foundation and towards a garden um, that I want to have that overflow flow to. Um, so always, always think about where exactly will this rain barrel be and that'll definitely help enable you to choose the best locations to put your spigot location and overflow locations. So how we do that, um, in this case, we are going to be using uh, an inch and a quarter adapter and we're going to have a hose clamp and then we also have uh, some tubing here that we will use for our overflow. All of these materials um, can be sourced at your local hardware store. They also can be found in this kit here, which is a standard sump pump drainage kit. This has the tubing, your hose clamp, and the adapter that you would need. These you can find, once again, at any hardware store um, in any place where you find any supplies for sump pumps. To drill this hole, since we had an inch and a quarter adapter that we're trying to use, our drill bit that we used to create this hole is gonna be an inch and a half. So um, you could use a drill bit such as this or a hole saw. I personally, like using hole saws better, it's a little bit easier. Um, sometimes on these recycled barrels, the plastic can get really, really thick. Um, so when you decide on your location, first think where you want to direct your overflow to. You know, you don't wanna direct it towards your house or foundation. You wanna make sure it's directed towards a garden or somewhere away from a foundation. Um, but also uh, for the sake of uh, uh, maximizing your storage, you don't want to place this too low, um, but also if you have a recycled barrel like this, the plastic does get th thick. So if you put it really, really high up, you're gonna have a really tough time drilling through this particular material. 
So once you have drilled your hole, like with our spigot, um, your hole might be a little bit tight. Once again, you can use something like a metal file to very carefully um, make that hole just the right fit so that you have, once again, a tight seal. If you want to further enforce that seal, use the PTFD thread tape, or you can use caulking um, to just make, sh make sure it's really, really watertight. Okay. So once you have your adapter set in your barrel, all you have to do is attach your hose and then tighten this hose clamp and you'll be all set. So there's a couple last things that people are always asking me when I, we are uh, hosting rain barrel workshops or when I'm trying to promote rain barrels to different customers all over the Des Moines metro. And they always ask about, you know, do rain barrels promote mosquitoes? Will that be a problem? Well, your answer is no, because rain barrels, as long as you are using the water in the rain barrel, there won't be enough water in there for them to lay eggs, but also there's a special trick you can use. For your area in which the water will flow from a downspout, you can use a mesh screen like this. Um, this is a screen that I picked up from a hardware store. Um, it's the same type of screen that you may find on a window or a screen door. Um, so all you have to do is cut a simple piece of this, put it over top of your entry point, and then you can tack it down with either glue or small nails. And that'll be a great way to not only keep out the bugs and mosquitoes you don't want, but also to keep out debris like leaves and sticks. The last step of building a rain barrel is also understanding how to install it. So at your home, when you have finished making your barrel, the first step in installing your barrel is to properly put it on a stand. Um, rain barrels such as this hold, can hold up to 55 gallons of water. A single gallon of water can weigh over eight pounds, which means that this can be over 400 pounds in weight. So when you're choosing a stand, um, make sure that it's very sturdy, such as this wood stand we have here, or try something like cinder blocks or a stack of pavers, uh, but make sure the ground is very level before you put your barrel on there. Once you know the proper height that your barrel is going to be, all you have to do is take a look at your downspout, take a mark a um, couple inches above this rain barrel, um, or you can think about, you know, if you're going to use a different downspout connector like this, you know, think about, okay, how much space do you need from your gutter to properly get this in the right spot so that water can easily flow into the barrel, or consider using something like this, which is a downspout diverter, which can direct water to the rain barrel from one side, and then you can attach the remaining, uh, the existing gutter to the other. Um, so once you have discovered a height, mark it, and then use something like tin snips to cut your gutter off, and then you should be all set um, to have water flow into your barrel. During the off season, um, I highly recommend to take your barrel off of your gutter, store it inside of your garage or a shed, um, make sure it's empty of water, um, we store it upside down, and during that off season, if you did detach your normal gutter, um, make sure you reattach that piece that you did cut off to fit the rain barrel and you should be all set for winter. Now, this video has made you excited to build your own rain barrel. I'm happy to announce that many cities across the Des Moines Metro and other cities across Iowa do have rain barrel rebates available. Many of these programs do support rain barrels if you were to buy them pre-made, but also they will help reimburse you um, for the cost and materials of building your own. Um, you can find more information about all of these programs and rebate programs at the website raincampaign.org. Um, you'll find contacts for the city program managers, website links, and even a how-to guide to build your rain barrel in case you need to reference what we just talked about in this video. <laughs>